Right, so today we're going to start um, a few, I guess these are experiments in UART, Universal Asynchronous Receive Transmit uh, protocol, um, listening in on devices, connecting to hopefully some debug ports we find in various old routers that I've got lying around the house. Um, before we go into that and see to ensure that I understand how these things work. So I'm um, going to be using, just this is just a test example of um, setting up an Arduino Nano with a very simple sketch, which is going to send um, just a simple message, an account um, uh, um, at 74880 BPS. So let's just compile this onto the Nano and if I open up the actual program, so that should be an OBS, brilliant, so it's uploading. Okay, compiling. This has already finished. Ah, it's done. Right, okay, so it was just, for whatever reason, wasn't displaying on the screen, so I guess that's an OBS thing, I'll edit that. So this is now running, so it should be sending this account, wait 50, um, 50 of a sec is it 50 microseconds 50 milliseconds uh, please subscribe and like half a second and click the notification bell and then two seconds later it will it will repeat so let's just close down that open up the um, the monitor and let's have a look let's see what it's doing here we go let's just clear the output for a second please subscribe and like click the notification bell oh guys I've already done this a few times let's just hit the reset button on this and that should hopefully go back to, here we go, three, four, five, cool. So that's sending this every, every few seconds. What I want to do now is actually capture this in my Arduino Uno and have this act as a serial uh, TTL capture device. Um, I don't believe you can just plug in um, a USB connection. Um, yes, I've tried. So just get a USB um, wire. Um, basically, let's just close this. We don't need this anymore. Close that. Close this. Cool. So you know, in theory, you can plug this into a computer, take the other end off, and you've got your, you should normally have four cables, um, ground, power, receive, transmit. I think this is this has got five, because I think one's a braid. I'm not actually too sure. One, two, three, four, yeah. So this was from, I don't know what that was from. Must be an old mouse. Anyway. I don't think you can just plug that into a device and start capturing serial data. I think there has to be some kind of um, chipset involved. Um, so what we can do, um, so we don't know, we know this is now transmitting, we don't need to have this plugged into the computer anymore. What we're gonna do is, uh, first of all, we're going to just prove that this is transmitting at um, 74,800, 74,880 um, baud rate. Now, I don't know if you can do this that accurately, but I believe if I use, um, so we're only going to be capturing two, two channels. So if you haven't used one of these before, this is a, Chinese clone of a Sadie Logic um, analyzer, the eight channel, and the you can use the the Sadie Logic software because this is a, a, effectively a replica of the of the hardware, but you should really use the open source equivalent, which is um, Sigrock, which is an excellent tool, which I much prefer to the the Sadie Logic um, the Sadie. Um, software. So let me just connect this up to this device. So we're going to have channel one capture the, the data. 
So this is with convoluted green goes to red. So we're going to have this and to transmit and then the ground goes into the ground of this device. And I'm just going to plug this into, um, in fact we will, we're just going to, we're just going to power this in with a separate device. So it's not, not in the computer. I'm just going to power this up because it's easier this way. So what's happening now is the data we saw on the serial monitor before has just been sent to the logic analyzer. So if we open up um, Pulse View by Sigrock or Sigrock Pulse View, um, let me just capture this because I haven't captured it yet. Sigrock and Pulse View. Okay, brilliant. So what we need to do is, um, uh, first of all, we need to make sure that we can actually see the device. So there's no device so far. We need to just choose a driver, which is going to be a generic driver, FX2 LAFW, scan, and we find the set of logic with HI. You won't be able to see this. Let me just... Uh, this is limitation of OBS. I don't know how to get around it. Um, so let me just do that one more time. And device, OBS. I'm going to capture another window, which will be pulse view connected device. So we should hopefully see, see that underneath. Here we go. Brilliant. And what we're going to do here is amend the driver to generic driver. And then we're just going to scan. And then we found set logic with eight channels. So that's now going to allow us to actually um, see what's happening on the board. So let me just close that. Then we should be back to here. Brilliant. Um, so there's a few things. That you have to well, I don't know if you have to set them up, but videos I've seen um, tend to have a pre-trigger capture of twenty percent. So this is it's basically at what point in the um, the voltage increasing or decreasing does the um, the signal get captured and pre of twenty percent. And what we want to do here is let's just disable all those, and we're only, we're only capturing channel. Uh, zero, which well, channel one on here, which is channel zero, but you know, the lowest number. Um, and what we want to do is because we're capturing, we want to capture a couple of seconds. Let's do five mega samples, and we'll just capture this at the highest rate it can, and we'll just run this. So, this is again, this has been so let's just reset that so we get back to, to zero. So, we'll run this, and we should, there we go, we've captured some, some data. Um, I've actually captured two lots of data. Let's just run that again. So there should have been a two second delay. Or is that the ah is that the fiftieth of a second delay? Oh fantastic. Let's just do that one more time. Run that again. So I'm obviously not quite capturing enough. Let's try 20 mega samples. And again. And again. Here we go. Just had to capture it at the, the exact moment. So we know from from the sketch that that's going to be the the initial count, um, and then this bit over here is going to be the. Well, it should be. Actually, I'm not too sure what that is. Let's have a look. Please like and subscribe. So uh, there's a few things I wanted to show on this, but first of all, let's just add in because we know. Uh, again, this won't we won't see this on here, but basically there's various decoders are available in Sigrock. So we know this is UART, so I'm just going to choose that UART decoder um, and basically just set the receive, oh, it doesn't really matter here, receive as D0, and we'll change this to um, 75880. Um, so what that should do is decode this uh, for us. 
um, but it's for defaults to hex in this instance, so let's change that to ASCII. And then that looks to be 14, so maybe that was the 14 times. That's the counter. So if we go over to the second set of... Here we go. So we've got please subscribe. So this has decoded this for us, so um, I must have had it... So that's the count, please subscribe and like, and then another 50th of a second. So I need to capture two seconds worth. So let's just do this again and just capture a gig example. Here we go. That's right, so we're going to reset that, run. This should now capture. Okay. Let's stop that. Right, so this is, have I actually got three lots? So count, please like and subscribe. Is that a fifth? Ah, okay, so this is going to be from here to there. Is that 500, 500 milliseconds? This should be the count, so this will be one or two. There we go, one. And this bit over here will be... Please subscribe and like. This bit over here should be and hit the notification bell. Here we go, we hit the notification bell. Brilliant. Cool. So we can see in this exactly what's happening. Um, but what I want the, the main reason for looking at this is for each each bit. Um, what we can do is we can measure the distance between them and this was just to show an example of how we can approximate the the board rate if we're not sure exactly what's what the the speed is um, so if we click in here and just extend this we should hopefully see uh, this is 13.5 microseconds I think that's a micro is that anyway 13.5 and the formula to use is, is basically one divided by the microseconds, so one divided by 13.5 times 10 to the power of 6. Um, now, because that's 13.5, um, I don't have... I can't... Sh let me see if I can show my calculator. So 13.5... Okay, spoiler alert. I can't get the calculator to show on the screen. So this is a mini punch-in edit just to talk through and hopefully show some visuals that... The calculation is is one divided by thirteen point five times ten to the power of six, which give you seventy four thousand and seventy four. So seven four zero seven four. So it's an approximate board rate. If you were to put that value into Putty or your serial device, uh, it would still it would still capture. Obviously, it's just it's it. I, I don't know. It, it's um, is it because it's. So close, I don't know the reason why it still works, even if it's not an exact board rate, but it does. So 74074 is the calculation you get from the logic analyzer. 74880, um, I think I say I type in 75880 in the scene coming up in Putty, but you get the idea. So back to the video, I'll just skip all this bit. So we've captured the nano via the serial port. We've analyzed the data in the logic analyzer. What we can now do is remove this and remove this and this connects the UNO directly to the PC and use the UNO to power the Nano and also as a serial um, TTL device. So the first thing we need to do um, is basically bypass the chip, bypass the, the mega chip. Um, so re reset pin to ground, that nullifies the chip. And then what we need to then do, just put that in there, is connect. We just need, so we need the ground on here, connected to ground on here. And what we need to do is power this. So I, I've just used 3.3 volts and you power this by plugging this into well I, for some reason I can only, by plugging it into the five volts I get power so this is now 
transmitting again as we found as we had before. All we then need to do is go from transmit because that's the pin we're sending the signal out to to the transmit pin. So it's it's like for like the transmit to transmit, but we're actually going to be receiving on this. Let me just show this for a second. The odd the Arduino. Uh, can't see this, damn it. Okay, so I'm just going into the, the tools, the board, change it to Uno and the port. Okay, so it's COM4. So we'll just close down that software. So we're on COM4 for here. We open up Putty and we just change this to, put this over here. Um, Putty, show that. Um, what we need to do is just start a new session. Go to Serial. Uh, in fact, let's just add this to here. Windows Capture. Uh, putty configuration. Here we go. Bro. So what we're doing is amending the this to com4. And because we know the speed is 75880, we'll just do that. And what we should find is that the but it's not coming through. Let's just close that inactive session. Oh, right, I had the wrong session open, so here we go. So now we have we're capturing the, the UART, the, the serial connection from from this into the Uno. This is powering this and it's coming into the Uno into the serial port. And if we hit reset, we'll get um counter back to uh, to one please subscribe and like and click the notification bell so this is just how to set everything up so we can start capturing serial traffic and obviously um i can plug in when we have if you find any uart connections we just plug in the receive to the receive of the board and we can hopefully interact um with a shell on some of these devices using putty so thanks very much for watching i'll catch you in the next part of the series cheers